So let's just get a little bit warmed up by thinking about the tissue box of our torso. Let's bring our feet completely together. Shoulders and hips nice and square. So thinking about the tissue box of the torso, as in the shoulders and the hips are the corners of the, of the tissue box. Let's just take a nice deep breath in. Allow the rib cage to expand. When you breathe out, notice the rib cage drawing down, maybe lifting that pelvic floor internally a little bit. Standing up really nice and tall. Let's place the hands at the back of the head, interlace the fingers. Squeeze those legs together a little bit in the center. Think of lifting the top of the head all the way up to the ceiling, sending the tailbone down, lifting the back of the head and neck. And then imagining our plumb line straight down through the center. So I feel like now like I've really activated my, my center, my awareness, my awareness of my plumb line, my, um, yeah, just awareness of the plumb line, the tissue box as well, which is gonna come very much into play today. We're looking at sort of pelvic stability, supporting the lower back, core stability with these four um, exercises from the physio. Great, let's, let's drop the arms down there. Let's take the feet a little bit wider. Span the hands across the torso. So fingers and thumbs spread far apart. We're gonna transfer that plumb line in a straight line from side to side. So as it falls down to the floor, it's over the ball of the foot. And then we're going to go onto one side, peel the other heel off onto the top of the toe, and then lift the leg into a knee fold, placing that leg down, swapping to the other side. So we're trying not to disturb that tissue box in any way. So straight on, it's, it's forwards. There's also no twisting. There's no shortening of one side or the other. That is our plumb line. Let's add a little bit to this. As we lower that leg, we're going to take both arms up to the ceiling, breathing out and then breathing in. So I've added arms and legs here. Breath out, your unnatural way to breathe when you're taking your arms up to the ceiling and breathing in as you lower trying to grow tall, breathing in as you lower the arms, trying to grow taller each time. Getting that leg opposite your hip, try not to let it uh, come across to your midline. So when the feet are down, the arms are up. And we are there. Let's bring those feet together. Let's take the arm and the leg out to opposite sides of the body. Again, we're looking to keep this torso the tissue box really nice and still. Creating a diagonal line from that top arm across your torso to the bottom foot. With no change, ideally, in the body. So let's take our breathing again, breath out, that minor detail. <laughs> Um, breathe, uh, focus on the breathing, I should say, concentrated on the breathing. Breath out as you extend the arms away, breath in as you return. Breath out. Noticing that plumb line shifting across to the ball of the foot that you're standing on. That's what we're after. Going to make this the last one of those. Fantastic. We're going to do one more movement here. So opposite arm and leg. Really key to just everyday everyday movement. It's, it's how we move naturally, it's how we move well. We want to link it in with this uh, core stability. We're gonna take one leg out to the back and the same arm, but that's the opposite arm to the front leg, up. And then bringing the feet together again, or feet close-ish together. So from the front, again, tissue box staying really nice and still. From the side, you have to take a little pitch forwards, otherwise you're gonna to feel too uh, squished in that lower back. So a tiny pitch forwards towards the ball of the foot. Trying to get that arm up by the ear, and again, we want to create that straight diagonal line. Feeling some work maybe in the buttocks there. Brilliant, okay, let's mobilize a little bit. So feet are nice and wide, insteps parallel. 
reaching up to the ceiling, trying to straighten out the side seam of your torso, an equal amount of those. If you're right-handed, you probably started with your right hand, finish off with the left, and then hold both arms up, then let the arms drop, follow a spider along the ceiling to the wall opposite you, down the wall opposite you to the floor, and then along the floor to your mat, and then level with your toes. And then we've taken the head down, as far as it can go, the first part of our roll down. Then allow the rib cage to collapse, the shoulders to round, the arms to soften, knees to soften, roll down all the way, hang there from your waist. If I turn sideways, nice and relaxed, in the head and the neck, nod the head, shake the head, maybe roll the shoulders around a little bit, and then really strongly tuck the pelvis under, draw your belly button in tight towards your spine to unravel to come back up to the top. Let's just take the spider movement, the spider following the spider along the ceiling first of all. So we've got that nice length in the spine, following the spider down the wall to the floor opposite you, along the floor all the way to your feet. And go again, thinking of mobilising the spine, going through every single vertebrae one at a time, nod the head, shake the head, roll the shoulders again if you would like to, and then if you can, straighten and bend the legs a couple of times. Just checking out those hamstrings, how are those hamstrings feeling today? And then most importantly for the next move, really tuck that pelvis under, leave the head to hang, leave the arms to hang, unravel your spine sequentially. So the first movement in the physio exercises, there are four of them, it was a pelvic tilt. So we're going to do some pelvic tilts just standing. I'm going to slightly soften my knees, my feet are sort of mm, narrow shoulder width apart. One hand in front, one hand behind on my tummy and then my lower back. Softening the knees and taking a strong pelvic tilt. So tucking under with the pelvis, but not actually using the buttocks. It looks like they're being used because the shape of my body is changing because the shape of my pelvis is, is changing. It's, well, it's not changing, the shape of my pelvis isn't changing. Where my pelvis is in space is changing. So that changes the relationship with the, with the other muscles. But this is completely relaxed. Tucking under, I'm using pelvic floor. I'm thinking about really strongly pulling my belly button back towards my spine. Notice that the shoulders don't change. This is an isolating movement. So when we're down here, that's that movement, but much bigger now because we're, we're in a different position with our spine, that's that really strong tucking under, rolling back up to come back up. That's what we do all the time to come up. Let's take some sumo squats, so feet nice and wide outside of your shoulders, bend your knees, toes are going, sorry, knees are going over your toes, fingers in, fingers in and thumbs in so that your elbows go out to the side. And you're sort of in the international readies for sports, any sports <laughs> position. And you should feel quite comfortable here. If I turn sideways again, from here, with that support and that bracing on your, on your legs with your arms, I want you to take that pelvic tilt again, strongly tucking under, and then almost overarching the lower back. Notice that my upper back, my bra strap area, is joining in a little bit, but I'm not exaggerating it. I'm not really rounding that. We don't need that bit to be joining in too much. I'm strongly focusing on here. So let's, from there, just mobilize the spine a bit even more. Stay in that sumo squat. Relax your spine all the way down to the floor. Head, come, head finishes off the movement. And then now round the spine, tuck that pelvis under. Imagine you're being lifted up by that upper back bra strap area, bra strap or bro line, bra line or bro line for the guys. Might work for some of you. <laughs> then we're looking up to the ceiling, sticking the bottom out, arching the back, relaxing all the way down, rounding up. So now we're mobilizing the spine. Hopefully this should 
feel quite nice. We want to get it all moving, but we're in, almost initiating the movement with this pelvic tilt, especially the coming up the, the coming up part of it. Definitely initiating that movement, coming up, tucking under with that pelvis. Really great. Okay. Reach it up, blah, 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 blah. let's go for some rainbow side bends. So it's slightly bigger movement for our side reaches. We're going to sweep one arm across, taking a big step, bring the other arm over as well, and then just turn slightly to the side. So I'm touching my knees at the side. Stepping out, one arm follows the other, you're drawing that big rainbow in the sky. It's a little bit tough on the balance. So keep it a tiny bit smaller maybe to start with. And then looking up, stretching, reaching, relaxing when you get to the side. So we're starting to add in a little bit of rotation as well as a side bend. One more. Great, let's finish with the feet wide, nice and wide. Uh, toes facing forwards and taking our true rotation of the spine. Starting looking forwards with the head so that we're rotating around that spine like, it, like it's a pole. It's a, it, there's, your, there's your plumb line image. Sh hips, shoulders, hips and ankles are all rotating around. But what it isn't oh, is it's not shifting that plumb line, so my hips, are, I'm transferring my weight from side to side now. I'm truly rotating around the middle, arms are nice and relaxed. And then to add on to that, when you're a little bit warmer, look behind you, noticing that that extra bit of oomph with the head going as well should make that nice and helpful for mobilising that spine, moving, warming up on a rotational plane. If you're ever going off, if you're going off to play golf maybe, that's a great warm up exercise. Perfect, okay, we're going to take our feet nice and wide for my dance stretches. So just looking at, uh, stretching the, the backs of the legs, the side of the body, here we go. So we're taking one arm up, so just mirror me if you can. One arm up to the ceiling, feet really quite wide. I'm almost as wide as my yoga mat. Feet facing forwards. I'm going to turn my upper body only towards, the, towards this corner. I'm lengthening forwards, so it's a strong stretch on the back of the leg that I'm turning towards. Uh, my arm is up by my ear, my torso is nice and square, and then I'm going to relax all the way down. Now, this is quite strong. Just take it easy, make sure you're breathing, holding on to that lower leg, head towards the knee. I'm going to keep everything there, so now it's an even stronger stretch on the leg that I'm touching. I'm going to bend the other knee. This should transfer the stretch to a different place in the leg I'm stretching, so it should go to the goes to the inside thigh on that leg. The knee that I'm bending is going over my toes, I'm not letting it collapse in, I'm pushing that away a little bit. I'm now getting a bit of a stretch along the side seam of my back, it feels quite nice. Then I'm going to add rotation, taking that same arm up as the leg I'm stretching towards to the ceiling. So opposite hand is on the lower leg to help me rotate around, Shoulders in a straightish line, looking up to the ceiling. Relax everything in the middle, bend both knees, come into the middle, be nice and even, and then there's our pelvic tilt, yet again, all the way up to come up to the top. Let's do that on the other side. So the arm is up, we're turning the shoulders only, we're lengthening forwards, towards the corner. The idea is that your spine is still in its natural curve, so you might be here, but as long as you're getting a stretch on the back of that leg, back of the thigh mainly, when you relax all the way down, the stretch will go a little bit deeper, a little bit stronger. Holding it there, breathing each time, bend the other knee, knees going out over your toes, <coughs> and then you're taking the arm up to the ceiling, rotating the shoulders round. Again, watch that that bent knee doesn't collapse in at this stage. Keep the legs in the same position. 
Relax in the middle, bend both arms, nod your head, tuck under that pelvis, so that pelvis as much as you can, to roll all the way up. We're going to do that one more time each side. As you do this, we're going to, as you move into each stretch, we're going to breathe in. When you're in the stretch, we're going to breathe out. So breathing in, turning the shoulders, lengthening forwards, hold it there, breath out. Relax the upper body, breath in. Complete your breath in before you do a nice deep breath out. Deepen that stretch. Bend the other knee. Big deep breath in and the breath out. Taking the arm up to the ceiling. Rotating those shoulders round, rotating the spine round. Relax in the middle for a breath in. And rolling up, breathing out, unraveling the spine. One more to the other side. Arm up to the ceiling, shoulders square, breath in, lengthen forwards. Feel like you're lengthening out through the top of your head. Breathing out to hold the stretch. Relax down, fully breathe in before you stay there and breathe out. I'm not very good at this because I'm talking too much, as always, but bend the other knee. Notice where the stretch goes. Deepen the stretch by breathing out, when you breathe out. Keep that knee pushing away. Arm going up to the ceiling. Shoulders in a beautiful straight line. And bend the knees, relax in the middle, roll up through the spine, breathing out as you go. Well done, fantastic. We are gonna come down to the floor to repeat some more of these exercises. In fact, before we come down to the floor, let's just do a little bit of one leg standing. Just suddenly felt the need for this. So I'm standing on my weaker leg, twiddling ankles, twiddling toes, twiddling wrists, hands at the wrist, making some sea anemones with those hands. I just feel like I just wanted to just connect with the ends, ends of the limbs. Waking up the central nervous system a little bit. Let's swap sides. This time make a, maybe make a fist. Oh, that's hard. Making a fist and then spreading the fingers and thumbs apart uh, while circling the ankle. <laughs> Having a little bit of a wobble, but that's great. Waking up my internal mechanism for balancing. Oh yeah, and then just maybe roll through the toes, through the feet, maybe some shoulder rolls, there's a thing. No shoulder rolls in the warm up today, very unusual. Okay, great. We are honestly coming down to the floor now. Our first physio exercise was the pelvic tilt, which we're going to repeat on the floor. Uh, you can do in seated as well, which we're going to repeat. And so pelvic tilts we use a lot in Pilates, so it's a very familiar exercise for most of us. The second exercise is bracing or and also some uh, abdominal movements, abdominal exercises, um, but they're quite subtle today. They're going to be quite subtle and then we're going to make them a bit bigger. Um, you might think of that's only abdominal work um, that's done lying on your back, but actually bracing um, and a, a really good abdominal workout and an abdominal core strengthening exercise is just being here on all fours, hands underneath the shoulders, spreading the fingers and the thumbs, knees underneath the hips, your spine in its natural curves. Several levels of this, the head lifted, the shoulders sliding back, you could just push your knees, your shins, sorry not your knees, Push your shins into the floor and notice that there's a little activation, hopefully, of that belly button drawing gently towards the spine, maybe pelvic floor joining in a little bit. You want to be working, when you do these sort of exercises, especially the subtle ones, you want to be working from a perfect position. There's no, there's no good, there's no joy to be come from working here with that head carrying forwards. It's like you're trying to do the, a standing exercise and your head's here. It's just bleh. You do not, you do not want to reinforce our, our bad movement habits. So be in the perfect position, then push the shins in. 
or curl the toes under, lift the knees off very slightly, hold it there, brace. 10 times 10 second holds, if this is something that you needed to build your stamina in. If your back is feeling a bit dodgy, it's a great movement to do to remind your spine how to just hold and be stable and to build that endurance. If there's shaking, you haven't got much endurance, so therefore definitely do your 10 times 10 second holds. Uh, another way to do this, if the toes won't curl under in that way, is to go to the top of the feet. But just lift the knees slightly. Ideally, apart from uh, an, an activation in that lower abdominal wall, there shouldn't be any change in the shape of my spine, whichever one I'm doing, even that first one. Great, okay, that's our, that's our bracing in that position. Let's sit back if you can and just get those wrists moving again. We're going to move on to a little, a little um, press up. If you can, it's going to be a narrow press up today. So we want the hands a little bit closer together, fingertips facing forwards. We also want to tuck the elbows into the ribs, the rib cage, if you can. So the basic movement for, uh, in fact, first of all, sorry, let's have fingertips facing forwards, nice and narrow with the hands, shoulders over the hands. Let's tuck the pelvis under, let's take that pelvic tilt again. Really, that's all I'm trying to do, and then release back to a neutral. Tuck the pelvis under. So imagine that you've got a, imagine that there's a, you can see a greyhound dog or, or a sort of whippet type dog with a long, a, a long tail and they're really unsure and they've really tucked their tail between their legs. That's the, that's the action that we're trying to achieve here. Get that tail to come all the way through, tuck the pelvis under. But without too much joining in in the upper back and definitely without the head joining in too much. I want to initiate from that lower body, uh, <clears throat> that, lo that pelvis and that lower abdomen. Let's tuck under, keep the tuck under, Stretch back a little bit, so go halfway back towards your heels. This should be quite a nice uh, lower back stretch. So I'm really, really quite rounded. We're stretching away from the hands, stretching out in that lower back. And then as you come forwards, unravel the spine. Just allow it to release back to a neutral position. Then take your shoulders even more forward. So past your fingertips. I'm really leaning quite far forwards here. Hopefully your wrists will be able to cope with that. Then we're going to tuck the elbows in just a little bit. Straighten the legs. Straighten the legs. Straight, straighten the arms to come back up to the top. Tuck the pelvis under. Reaching back. Take a nice breath out there. Unravel. As you breathe in. Carry on moving forwards, tuck those elbows in. If you can, nose towards the floor, otherwise just bend those arms as much as possible. Coming back to that straight line, let's go again. Tuck under, breath in, breath out, so that you release and relax a little bit. Unravel through the spine, breath in, carry on travelling forwards. Breath out, tuck those elbows in, straighten the arms, one more for luck. Breath in, tuck the pelvis under. Get that tail between your legs, reach the hips back, breath out. Unravel all the way forwards. And then last one, pitch more forwards, tuck the elbows in. Woo, straighten those arms and have a little rest all the way back. Come onto your elbows. Again, tuck on the wrist, maybe have a little sway from side to side here. I'm, I'm sort of uh, thinking of mobilising my knees, my hips, my groin specifically, my lower back a little bit, and at the same time it's all going on with multitasking. Elbows are underneath the shoulder, or my, or my weight is supported on my elbows and I'm getting that blood flow back and those healing juices back into the wrist. That's what we need to keep those joints healthy. Yes, it's uncomfortable. Yes, it hurts a little bit, but try and keep it active. Try and keep it alive. Let's do some uh, aha <laughs> moments as well. Good, okay, great. We are, what are we doing next? We're seated for the C curve. 
So sitting as upright as you possibly can. Again, this is our pelvic tilt movement. From a neutral spine, I'm sitting right up on my sit bones, my pelvis is in neutral. All I'm gonna focus on is the pelvic tilt, scooping that tummy under, scooping it in and out. My back rounds, and my shoulders go back a little bit, I'm trying not to do too much actually, um, but my back only rounds because of this movement here, this strong, 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 strong tuck under. And if you notice, my back rounds after this has moved. This initiates the movement. This is pulling the tail between the legs. More of my buttocks, more of my leggings are going onto the floor. I'm not leaning back. I haven't, and I haven't uh, moved my shoulders back. I've just had to round my back a little bit to accommodate this really strong pelvic tilt. And then if you can, stay there, stay quite nice and rounded. So my hands are underneath the backs of the knees. My elbows are lifted. I'm gonna rock back a little bit. So I'm now balanced. And we're gonna bring, let's bring our toes together but keep our knees slightly apart. I have a sense of being round, round. It's like I've created a ball shape. That's why I've lifted my elbows, but shoulders are down. This is strong, or strong on the abdominals. Bringing the arms forwards like a ballet, ballet arm, like you're hugging a tree here. And we're just, and I've now got my hands on top of my knees. And we're just trying to lift the arms up. They won't go very far. Trying not to poke the head forwards. And then, let's do four of these. So keeping that scoop. If it's too much, just practice here. Just practice this bit. Holding that there, maybe unweighting the feet a little bit, but if you can, stay here. Then we're going to open the arms out to the side. Very tough. Keeping my nice rounded position now, keeping my ballet arms. Grand finale, one arm up, one arm out to the side, return to the centre. Four of these, if you can. Da 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 da. Ooh, great job. Have a little slump over those legs and or a lean back without too much collapsing, Mandy. Lifting the chest, but uh, sort of bashing the legs on the floor, just relaxing in the hip flexors. Very, potentially very grippy in the hip flexors, uh, but that's when that's that very strong work there. So well done if you managed to, to do all of that. Wonderful, let's come down onto our back. So this is the whole, we've started the bracing uh, on all fours. This next section is going to be a number of exercises, uh, four exercises actually, one, two, three, yeah, four exercises, lying on our back in the base position, all about setting, setting the core and all about this bracing. So let's get down there by hands behind backs of the knees, rounding the spine, unraveling all the way down, and then finding your base position. So base position for me, is this position where our legs are bent, but our spine is in, we're in the perfect position, with our legs bent, we're lying on our back, the spine is in neutral, the head is in line with the shoulder, we've got the curve at the nape of the neck, we've got the curve in the lower back, your pelvis is in neutral, pubic bone, hip bones, on the same plane. The curve at the lower back is different for all of us, but this is how we know we're in neutral. Feet and knees are in line with our hip bones, the hip, the hip bones at the front of the body, not too wide. Feet evenly weighted all the way round, just noticing that sort of gentle arch of the insteps, otherwise feet are equally weighted. Taking, bring your arms down by your side and just feeling the ribs at the back. So I quite like to have a bit of a wiggle about. So my ribs at the back below my bra strap are in contact with the mat. Quite often when I first lie down, especially if we've been doing some tough, tougher, stronger exercises, I will find that those, those ribs will be lifted. And then the ribs at the front will be lifted as well. I want you to try and relax so that all of the ribs in the spine are in contact. But then you've got that natural curve. 
The ribs at the back are really quite low. They're quite close to your waist, closer than you think. Feel the collarbone. Feel, be aware of the shoulders. Are both shoulder blades sort of evenly flat or a little bit more? more? Maybe your hands in the side is a bit more sticking up than the other. Um, and let's just think about setting the torso. So my way of setting the torso for abdominal work in general, but it's also what we're going to do right now, is to lift the shoulders, slide the shoulders just up towards your ears. Slide the shoulders down away from your ears. Notice that in your back, your shoulder blades will slide towards your hips. Feel like you're giving yourself a little bit of an armpit hug as this happens. So just maybe do that a couple of times. It's an activation around here. So it's where we want our shoulder blades to be nice and flat against the ribcage wall. Take a breath in. Take a big breath in. Notice the ribcage flaring. When you breathe out, notice that drawing down of the ribcage. So the front of the ribs here are connecting with the hip bones. They're sort of spanning this gap. There's a bit of a gap here where there's, there aren't any, any muscles where your internal organs are. It's quite, it's quite a handy gap. But for the purposes of this, I want you to try and link those two together. So the ribs at the front and the hips, hip bones at the front with a rod. So we've drawn the, and then we're going to put our hands, and that hands nice and flat, spatula hands on the hip bones. So elbows are on the floor. So set all those things in place, just subtly. Draw the shoulder blades down a little bit, connect the rib cage a little bit. Lift your pelvic floor a little bit. The first thing we're going to do, the first exercise we're going to do is just hovering, and we're only going to do a few of each of these, one leg, one foot, slightly hover it off the floor, think a centimetre, I will sort of try and do a couple of inches just to show you. Um, we're, we're alternating sides, we've set the torso, lift the pelvic floor slightly. What you're feeling for, what you're trying to notice with your hands and your elbows is absolutely no movement in that pelvis whatsoever. If you have set your core, this is possible. But you might be thinking, oh, is this really easy? Why are, we, why are we bothering with this? But actually, really be honest with yourself. Is there any, I'm talking a millimeter, a millimeter of movement is too much. And if any of those muscles aren't switched on, there will be movement. If I, okay, I've just, I've just completely relaxed. I don't know whether you can see it on this camera because they're not really close enough, but if I just lift the leg, yes, I'm lifting the leg a little bit bigger and I'm going a bit faster, but I'm not trying to control it at all. My pelvis is rocking and rolling from side to side like a seesaw. That's the movement we want to try and stop. Okay, adding on. So that have a little break in between. The next exercise is to lift the foot off slightly to extend the leg. If you lift your head up, knees roughly level, thighs roughly level. So we've added a bit of extra weight and then we're just going to bring that foot down. Lifting the foot off, extending the leg. It's not extend the leg and lower, it's just extend the leg, lengthening the lever. Close your eyes, notice. If you set everything in place, slid the shoulder blades down, slid the shoulders away from your ears, connected your ribcage to your hips, lifted your pelvic floor, maintained your perfect neutral position. As you do this from side to side, is there any extra pressure on one elbow more than the other. Do you feel that hip underneath the spatula of your hands just slightly dropping away? It'll drop away on the side of the leg that you lift. Hopefully nothing at all. Okay, coming back to our base position. This is the most, this one is the most difficult. We're going to just let one leg drop out to the side. This leg needs to be nice and relaxed. This leg needs to stay really still. And then we're swapping. So now we're challenging the pelvis on a rotational plane. What will happen is your pelvis will naturally want to follow that leg and the other leg will want to follow. Or you'll want to cheat. And as you take one leg out to the side, the other leg that's meant to be staying still will also go slightly out to the side just to counterbalance. Now you're going to really notice a difference in the, in the pelvis and, in, and also in how hard you have to uh, 
work to keep that pelvis absolutely stable. There's another thing here that's quite a difficult concept, is I'm relaxing the knee that's going out to the side. I'm relaxing that leg in the hip socket, but the rest of my pelvis is staying really strong and stable. Not fixed rigid, but I have to keep the pelvis strong. So this is pelvic floor. Brilliant exercise. Pelvic floor is our whole internal stabilizing mechanism. Notice the elbow. So when I'm taking my left leg out, I can feel there's extra pressure on that left elbow. I'm almost pushing down into it a little bit because I'm trying to uh, not let my hips go. Just be very conscious. How is that head positioned? Because you're thinking about something else. Has the chin lifted too much? If you look straight up, would you actually be looking at the wall rather than the straight up at the ceiling? Maybe tuck the chin in, make sure the back of the neck is relaxed. Great, okay, so that's one, two, three exercises. The fourth one is our general, our knee fold, which is actually fairly easy, but I did do, I, I'm not interested in doing too many of these because most of my Pilates clients and um, people that do Pilates with, with me regularly will know this movement, will be very familiar with it. When we come to a really familiar exercise, we don't generally work particularly hard because we don't need to, but probably you do need to. So notice as you do this very familiar exercise, is there any movement in the shape of your lower back, in the pelvis rocking and rolling from side to side, in the weight through the elbows, are the ribs flaring? Does anything else feel a little bit uncomfortable? Maybe a bit of gripping in the hip flexors if you're not bringing that knee into a, into a neutral. Good job, okay, that was our, our four exercises, lying on our back, all about abdominal bracing, maintaining that perfect position. Let's do some abdomin actual abdominal work. So we're going to take, we're going to take, an, we're going to stay on one side, so I'm going to use my camera, camera side, hands behind the head, elbows forwards, head nice and heavy. We're going to go straight into an abdominal curl and a knee fold. Five, no, let's do four of these. So I'm using my arms to lift my head up. I'm not using the muscles in my neck. I'm making sure that I'm in that perfect neutral position with my camera leg. I'm not changing the shape of my lower back. I think that was four, it might have been five. We're gonna add on, staying on the same side. Knee fold, leg slide, flexing that foot that slides along the floor, drawing back into the base, the starting position. Knee fold, leg slide. In some ways, sliding that leg along the floor helps you to keep your pelvis a little bit more stable. You should feel, your, you should be very aware, hopefully, of your abdominal wall, your whole core stability. I think I've done five again. <laughs> last one here. Okay, last movement, we're gonna go knee fold, leg slide, turn, back to center, come back in. This is the last set for four or five. Clear the shoulder blades, keep the camera shoulder blade clear, all centre, and let's just do four of these ones, gosh. We're here, foot flex, hips nice and stable, keep that shoulder blade clear that's close to the camera, back to the centre, and last one. Da, 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 da. Oh, yes. Brilliant. I'm going to switch around to the other side just for the purposes of being able to see myself on the monitor, getting very vain there, so that I can uh, see my, watch my technique. So we're here, all on the other side, so you'll be probably turning away from the camera unless you switch your legs to the other side. We are taking a knee fold only with an abdominal curl. I've got a funny feeling I'm only going to do four sets of each this time, because I'm starting to feel very tired. So with these exercises, each time I lower, I'm probably not doing it very well because I'm talking and uh, not concentrating particularly well. Uh, each time you lower, try not to let those ribs flare. Keep the abdominal wall set as we did all the way through it. Oh, there you go, I've done five this time. 
a little bit chatting in between. So we're going to add the knee fold leg slide. So I've got a pointed foot on the knee fold, I've got a flexed foot on that nice straight leg. It just feels nice and solid for the hips. Feels stable in my pelvis. Then I can concentrate on clearing those shoulder blades, keeping my head heavy in my hands. I think I'm going to do one more, which will be my four. Same movement, we're coming up again. We're turning towards that bent leg. We're keeping the shoulder blade on the same side. Oh, we're going to centre. We're coming back. We're here. We're turning. We're returning to the centre. And two more to go. Here we go. Back to the centre. And do, 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 do. Yeah. And a well-earned arm stretched out, loll the legs from side to side, maybe head in the opposite direction, and breathe, or stretching the legs out, stretching the arms away. Woo, that was tough. Great work. Okay, we are moving on to uh, straight bridge. How are we doing for time? Yeah, okay, three more exercises. Let's do a straight bridge. I'm going to stay this way round for a change, actually. So, lying on your back. First of all, actually, very quickly, let's do a lying on your back pelvic tilt. One of the first, the, the first exercises that we did from the physio. Um, so, we're going to tuck that pelvis under and then release. Tuck the pelvis under, push your lower back into the floor, pubic bone much higher than the hip bones, and release. That's it. All of the work, pelvic floor, drawing that lower tummy back towards the spine. Hold it there a moment. Increase your endurance in this position. It's really key for your internal stabilizing muscles. We've We've activated pelvic floor, we're building a little bit of endurance here. Across your tummy, from hip bone to hip bone, should feel like a smile, like it's a, like it's a hammock. It should feel uh, scooped out, like an ice cream scoop, not bunched, absolutely not bunched. Oh, I can do the same movement, I can tuck my pelvis under, but if I switch on different muscles, I bunch. This is all bunched up now. I'm tucking the pelvis under, scooping. It's a really strong scoop. Holding it there, I'm trying to apply pressure in my lower back into the, the mat, into the floor, and then releasing. Okay, ignoring that movement, so we've done that movement. If we were going to do some peeling bridges, that would be absolutely at the beginning of the end, and the end of the movement, if we were looking at articulating the spine. We're looking at strength and, and core stability today. So we're just gonna push the feet down to the floor. We're gonna lift the hips up. We're gonna activate those buttocks, sending the knees over the hips. This is a hip hinge. We've opened out the angle at the front of the hips. And then we're lowering with resistance. I'm keeping my buttocks activated. I'm not just coming crashing down, relaxing down. This angle is changing. The other angle, in, especially in my pelvis, is not changing at all. Lifting and lowering. The ribs stay connected. It's the tissue box. You're just tipping that tissue box up on its back corner. Its back uh, short edge, if you like. So we're here. And just holding it there. Noticing how does that feel for you? Knees and feet in line with your hips. Buttocks really activated. You might want to do some marching feet just to challenge that. How does that feel? You might just want to lift one heel, put it down, lift the other heel, put it down. If you were to lift the legs up, that would be much, much harder. You could take the arms up to the ceiling, so making sure that you're not uh, relying on the arms for this movement. And then coming back down, that time I did relax. Whenever I've done straight bridges, I always want to hug my knees in and just have a little roll around. 
it's quite tough uh, keeping your lower back, especially if you're quite curved in the lower back like me, keeping that lower back position all the way through. So if you feel like doing that, great. If you feel like doing something different, absolutely do that. Perfect, we are lying on our side. So number three of the four physio exercises, which is the clams. We're gonna do a slightly different variation of it. In fact, no, I'm not. We're gonna, uh, we're gonna start with the clams. So arm extended, underneath side lifted, no collapsing down, feet in line with your hips, your spine. You can lift your feet up and have a little look. Some people don't realize how they can do that, but just lift your feet up, have a little look, then lie them down. Maybe line yourself up at the back of your mat. So clams is just lifting the top knee, Again, using this top buttock, squeeze the heels together a little bit. When you lower, lower the knee with resistance. Noticing how far does that leg go without your hip rolling back. Try not to let your hip roll back at all. I've just put my hand on that hip, making sure it doesn't move. My hips are stacked, one on top of the other. You could just go lift to the top and relax and collapse, not really much work going on there, or you could really push down on that side, you could really push down the underneath leg, you could really squeeze your heels together, you could work on the way up and the way down. Now we're firing up the right muscles. And building that strength and endurance in them. Let's add on to this, so that was the clams, that was the, well, the third physio exercise. Taking that um, top leg forwards, try not to let your knee drop down to the floor because if you look at your hips, your hips will be tilted and uh, not stacked one on top of the other. If you've got a cushion or you've got a roller or something to put underneath that knee, great. Otherwise, just relax the foot, get it out of the way, straighten the underneath leg, flex that foot. Now we're lifting and lowering that straight leg and you're trying to work on your side seam. Imagine you're standing on this leg. So everything from my arm, my arm is up by my ear, my spine is in its straight line, my leg is continuing that straight line. We're standing on it. The foot is flexed, the underneath, uh, the inside edge of my foot is the bit that I'm pushing up towards the ceiling. Holding at the top for 20 little pulses. If you're starting to get a bit necky, Lift your head up, turn and look towards the, towards the mat. Just make sure that neck is nice and relaxed. Keep that underneath side pushing down. Keep the top shoulder away. Staying up as high as you can, 20 pulses. Here we go, 20, 19, 18, 17, 16, 15, 14, 13, 12, 11, 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, and relax, well done. So we're working one half of the pelvic floor with any of that side lying inside thigh work. Really key, we're just getting the whole of the pelvis stable so that it can support the lower back and the spine in general. So lift your feet up, feet are in line or line up with the back of the mat, in line with your spine, in line with the hips. Relax initially, I'm completely relaxed on that underneath side, now I'm lifting up and there's a gap between my shoulder blade and my hip, big gap, all the way, all the way around, you can't see it from that angle. I'm squeezing my heels together, I'm lifting the knee, this is my weaker hip, but my looser hip, I'm tighter on the other side, so I feel like this knee goes a little bit higher here, but I'm making sure that my hip doesn't roll back, I'm lowering with resistance as well, getting that top shoulder out of the way, Pushing down on the underneath leg, the outside of my underneath leg. I really notice the difference when I activate that as well. And I find that I, uh, I know I've done it because I, let my, I push my ankle into the floor on that underneath leg. As opposed to if I'm not activating it, that ankle just slightly lifted. Pushing down the whole of the side of the leg, which helps me to lift, which helps me to brace. Helping us to isolate, activate the right muscles. Wonderful, let's take that top leg out of the way. Just relax the foot, 
You just want that leg out of the way, basically, but not with the knee drop down, the hips roll drop too far forwards. So we still want the hips to be stacked. We still want that waist lifted from the side. We're flexing the foot, the leg is in a straight line, and then we're lifting and lowering as high as you can. Check your underneath waist. When that leg goes up to the top, potentially, if you allow your pelvis to move, your waist to move, your waist will dip each time. Don't let that happen. I can feel that set stress just coming into the back of my neck a little bit. I'm going to turn my head towards the floor a tiny bit more. Oh, a rhyme. I think one of a few, I've done a few rhymes today, I think. So staying at the top this time, 20 pulses up a little bit further if you can. 20, 19, 18, 17, 16, 14, 13, 12, 11, 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, and relax and collapse. Good job. We are finishing off on our tummies. So the last exercise is leg lifts from here. Leg lifts, hip extension. I quite like to do this. There's a couple of ways you can do this. You can put one hand on top of the other, so you're resting your forehead on the back of your hands, um, or you can cup your hip bones with your with your hands, and it feels like your hip bones, your yeah, your hip bones are crushing your hands basically. I quite like this one. Um, I'm going to do this one just so I'm, I'm, there's a bit of a double whammy here. So if you're comfortable here with your shoulders, please try this one. At the moment, everything is relaxed. I feel like my hands are being crushed by my hip bones. I'm just starting with the tip of my nose, touching the mat. I'm going to lift the back of my head and neck up slightly. I'm allowing my shoulders to round forwards. I'm going to lift my shoulder tips up a little bit. So I am activating upper body quite a bit as well, but that's not the end of the world. Again, we're working in a good position. I'm going to just slightly push my pubic bone into the mat a little bit. I'm going to pull my belly button tightly away from the floor as if there's a, an ice cube underneath my belly button. So I'm activating um, the internal muscles that we looked at earlier. This in turn means my pelvic floor lifts slightly. I can feel my, I'm aware of my sit bones sort of sliding towards each other. I'm going to connect the rib cage to the hips, even though we're lying on our front. That, that's actually quite difficult in this position. If you were here, draw your shoulder blades, draw your shoulders down away from your ears. You can, it's easier by pushing your elbows into the, into the mat, actually, into the floor. It's easier to connect that rib cage a little bit. But try and connect the rib cage anyway if you're in this one. The beauty of this position is you can feel those hips rocking and rolling. We're trying not to have the hips to rock and roll at all. We're lifting one leg and then lowering one leg. Lifting the other leg and lowering the leg. And I feel, I feel really strong. I feel really strong in my center. I feel really stable. Buttocks feel activated. They feel fired up. The back line of my legs feel ready to do the work. There's no rocking and rolling, there's no, there's no relaxing. Even though you're lying on your tummy, we're still working. That core, that tissue box is, is in place. And actually if you wanted, oh that's a little bit harder. So I'm li I was lifting one leg and then lowering it, lifting the other leg and then lowering it. You could try a gentle flutter that's significantly harder, significantly more strenuous on the, lower, on the lower back. I'm managing it, but that might not be quite where you're at. Woo, wonderful. Almost an hour, fantastic. Uh, let's come up onto all fours and have a good old wiggle about. So for me, some spine circles going round in both directions, adjusting the clothing. <laughs> Uh, I love going from all fours, curling my toes under, lifting up, coming into a downward dog, oh, to stretch the calves, stretch the backs of those legs. I'm going to just pad my feet through, rolling through the feet, and I am going to take some bear walks because I love the bear walks. Forwards and backwards, 
And whatever you're doing, it really doesn't matter at this stage in class, I actively encourage you, the beauty of YouTube is that I can't see what you're up to, uh, just have a good old wiggle about. Just maybe try something you haven't done before. Here's one. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so some shoulder rolls, some head rolls, uh, yeah, pushing back into a, into a squat. Try not always to do the stuff that you know that you can do that you're comfortable with. You should be quite nice and warm now, or at least very bodily aware. Have a little bit of a play. The beauty of this, this feels great actually. <laughs> oh, I'm gonna try this in class, yeah. As long as your knees are okay, but if your knees aren't okay for this, but you might be able to do it, go work towards it, have a little go. Have a little play. Fantastic. Well done, everyone. Happy Easter Monday in the UK. I hope to see you again soon. And good job. <laughs>